characterizations because I think this is where this team has been the most dodgy. Then I'm going to talk about how, what did they actually want. Then I'm going to talk about did we make no progress in the past. And then what keeps South Korea safer. And finally I'm going to talk about this whole idea of them coming and going. You know, come a chameleon, right? Now, Mr. Speaker, characterization. First they go, oh, this is an evil, irrational country. They're crazy. They do this and that. We can never predict them. Then they go, yet they will be completely rational actors when China withdraws its support because they need China's support. They're able to weigh out a calculus of harm and benefit and respond to it. You can't have it both ways. We say if you accept that they can value China's support, they will also be able to value South Korea's support. And past experience shows that they're more likely to respond to that given the, inve the close investments. Then they said they're going to say put food on the table, right? Eric comes out after I said put humanitarian aid and goes, oh, it's a horrible thing. The army is going to eat it all. You know, they're going to make themselves big strapping young North Korean soldiers. And then Aina comes out in the final speech. goes, oh, no, sorry, Mai comes out and goes, oh, no, no, no. The army is not going to get it. The people are going to get it. And the army is going to go, look at us getting the food, giving you food. You know, and it keeps, it goes on like this. Then, they, you know, it's just you know, the unconditional idea. You know, why is it unconditional? They kept on pressing on it. And we pointed out at the start that there is more than just a relationship of two countries. These are countries with cultural and familial ties. That's why the human I said this in my first point. Humanitarian ties are important. What did they want to the debate? They threw the word hardline stance around, which actually I think was a euphemism for same old, same old. Because essentially, it hasn't achieved anything. And they showed no causal link between that. Then let's talk about, did we make no progress? And I think this is where they really did us an injustice. I pointed out that these two countries are technically at war, yet they jointly developed a tourism region. They jointly developed an industrial complex where textiles were made. They had summits with each other. Someone won a Nobel Peace Prize, Madam Speaker. They just pretended that all this material wasn't there, like they did to NC as well. Because this is it. Which keeps South Korea safer? Because empirically, and that's the only basis you can judge this way on, we pointed out that the danger to civilians happened in the current status quo. But more so, we say principally, a state's role, and I said this in my, my first point, is to protect its civilians. Your policy provides less of a guarantee on that based on past experience. You have not responded to that standard, neither have you been able to provide us any guarantee that South Korea won't repeat, repeat its behavior. Finally, about this idea of coming and going. South Korea has been recalcitrant. Madam Speaker, I said that in the first point when I was giving you the context. When I told you why President Lee withdrew the current, not, went to a policy of non-engagement, I said it's because they withdrew from the six party talks. It's the reality that North Korea is going to be like this. We need to be the bigger person because it keeps us safer, because we have the ability. And Madam Speaker, from then until now, we're proud to propose. Thank you guys very much. It was boring. Cheers. 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 Cheers.